All right. This is episode 180. This is the fourth season, the fourth year of ClearProp TV, and we have merged over for uh, for Run to the Sky. So this is actually belongs to Run to the Sky nonprofit. This amazing podcast. All right, looks like we're on. So welcome everybody. My name is Sean Simons. Welcome to Run into the Sky Paramotor Podcast. You guys know it is clearproptv.com. Welcome everybody. Tonight we're going to be talking about a lot of fun things. Pretty much, Butch is going to be running around in the background. What's up, Butch, in the background? Hey. And uh, we got Will Fly, Paramom, USA, and Scuba Steve. So uh, let's go ahead and talk with Linda real quick. Linda, uh, welcome. And we want to see some pom poms and all that fun stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know, right? I got one hand. The kitty wants to play. And then I have my phone. Hi, everybody. <laughs> welcome. Monday night. <laughs> We're just kind of kind of have a uh, just kind of hangout show Monday night. Talk about stuff, mostly paramotor stuff, and what everybody's been up to all week and everything. And yeah, that's what we do on Mondays. We just kind of you never know. You never know who's going to pop in the Zoom, and you know we all just kind of hang out. So welcome everybody. Welcome my panel. You guys are awesome. Couldn't do it without you. I had an awesome uh, weekend. Oh yeah, what'd you do? Stayed in, Hall- stayed in um, Holland, Michigan, at my sis's house, and all my sisters and some friends. We all got together. We had a girls' trip, so we had a really fun girls' weekend, like four days. We just everybody hung out. We went to uh, went to the dunes and went on went went on the. Uh, what do you call that? The buggy, dune buggies. And uh, that was super fun. And it wasn't like a dune buggy, dune buggy, you know, where you go pouncing and, you know, all over the place. So they took you in this dune buggy, but it was, you know, a bunch of people in it. And I took a go through all these crazy roads and everything. And it was super fun. So we had a really good time. Really good time. It was a nice break and everything. Good weather and all that stuff. So this is our tradition now. Once a year, head over to Sis's well, and and really our cool. her husband cooks and makes us breakfast and barbecue and it's pretty cool. So yeah, very blessed. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Well, it's always good to see you um, because this is summertime. We don't have a guest right now. We're trying to keep it, you know, guest list in a sub. Somebody really wants to uh, join us. Um, if you notice, I got the hiccups, so I apologize if in the middle of the, my sentence I hiccup like that. Um, let's see. We are going to be giving away something awesome tonight. We're going to be giving giving away a, a throttle magnet. You know those really okay. cool magnets that keep your throttle on. Uh, courtesy of Chris Carlos and. Uh, cool. So thank you very much, Chris. We appreciate that. So we're going to be doing the spinny wheel, spinny wheel of Winnie things. I always have to emphasize Will. Uh, matter of fact, we're going to be looking at uh, Will's just the tip 11.0 tonight. And then we're also going to be talking with Scuba Steve tonight about the new PPG headsets. So make sure you stay tuned. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Will Fly, welcome to the show, buddy. Hey. Thanks. Good to be here, as Good. always. I always look forward to Monday nights. Me too. So tonight we're going to be talking about just the tip, uh, 11.0, right? Yeah, and truthfully, just the tip. You know, usually it's a lie when someone says that, but we're really going to talk about just the tip. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And uh, t- tonight, Scuba Steve, uh, welcome. I'm glad that you're here, buddy. Hey, hey. how's everybody doing? Hope everybody had a safe fourth. I know we're way past that now, but you know, if you keep all yeah. your fingers and toes, you're doing pretty good. Always keep the fingers and toes. And uh, you have the PPG smoke headsets, right? Have yes. you been able to check them out and test them out? And um, uh, I have. Um, I mean, we're going to go into that in a little bit. It, the PPG smoke unity headset is the newest iteration of the PPG smoke headset. We'll talk about that. 
Excellent. All right. So first off, let's go ahead, ahead and uh, chat with uh, Will Fly. And once again, um, I hope you like hiccups because I got those. <laughs> I've had those for the last two two days. How, how the hell do you get for three days? Say peanut butter. Peanut butter? There you go. What is that? Right, you're cured. <laughs> Oops. No. <nope, that's laughs> you have to believe in the peanut butter. <laughs> I believe in the peanut butter, but the peanut butter doesn't believe in me. <laughs> nope, there it goes. It always works for me. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> I, need, I need somebody. To, I need somebody to scare me or something, but uh, that doesn't work very well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and mute my hiccups and stuff, and we're going to let uh, Will Fly talk about just the tip, uh, 11.0, and uh, don't forget to say hello to Will Fly in the super chat because we are gonna be giving away a throttle magnet and the spin, spinny Will of Winnie Thanks. Did that make it bigger? Yes. Just the and tip. We're talking, we're talking about just the tip and just made it bigger. Yes, we, we <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, yeah, I have a lot of fun putting these videos together. And, uh, you know, just at the last minute, Sean was like, hey, you wanna just talk about your video tonight? And I said, like, okay. So um, anyone that knows anything about me as far as my videos go, I take my time doing them. And uh, I kind of let them evolve. Um, a lot of times I'll start with an idea and at the end of the video, it's something completely different. Um, and sometimes things happen in, in the middle of a video that I'm doing and I kind of incorporate that uh, in, into that video. If it's oh, I just noticed that. That is hilarious. What? You have a door alarm sensor. Okay. Uh, yeah, came, <laughs> it came with the, came with the van. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I got my coffee pot in the back there and... Uh, um, yeah, van life in itself, that's, that's a whole nother freaking, uh, show, you know, it's yeah. uh, it just, you just grab the keys and go, but it, there's a lot of thought that goes into, you know, full time and in a van, even if it's just for a week at a time. And especially when you're bringing, you know, little dogs and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. So anyways, I'm going to press play. There's not going to be any sound, um, but We'll just kind of go through it. That's my little dog, Yubby. Um, this video, I started out talking about changes. Um, so many people that I've met in paramotoring have gotten into this sport because uh, it, it they heard that it can change their life and, and for the good. You know, uh, it's good therapy. It's a good distraction. It's a good life distraction. I've often said, and I mean it, that the only time that I feel 100%, 100%, I mean, you know, like just I'm, I'm happy with where I am at that moment is when I'm in the air. And uh, so kind of started it out with that. And learning to fly is something that uh, I, I have always wanted to do. And I actually did. And that's, you know, I'm a... a a uh, commercial pilot. I've got a flight instructor, uh, CFII, and uh, I've always just had flying in the back of my mind in some form or fashion. So uh, I'm not going to go through the entire video, just the key points. Let me uh, fast forward it here just a little bit. My internet's going slow. Uh, I'm not in. It's coming up, it's coming up. Um, so I, I like to start the video off with, uh, you know, some cool shots that I've gotten, you know, personally. Um, the next section talks about PPG growth. And this actually amazed me. I knew that we had grown a lot as a sport and this was not a scientific <laughs> survey or, or whatever, but uh, just a, a short period of time, I threw up on several different uh, websites like USPPA, Paramotor, some of the bigger ones, uh, asking what year did you take your first flight? And from the results that I got, I mean, it just, it has spiked so much. It kind of stayed level from 2014, you know, here, down here, all the way up to 2021. It started to head up in 2020. And I believe that if it weren't for COVID, because man, the, the, we were rocking. Training was really, really experiencing a boom, but COVID kind of put a damper on things. 
Um, so we went uh, had a slight decrease, but man, check out what happened in <laughs> 2021. So uh, 7,556 percent increase. That is uh, that's that's pretty impressive. All right, and then the next step. Let's see. So then I go into the uh, whole ethanol free thing. Uh, if you ever, if you use ethanol free fuel, which I do, it's always best to get it from a dedicated pump uh, because if you don't, uh, whatever somebody else has, uh, you know, the, whatever the person before you got, if you got 87, just regular unleaded, but there's still fuel in that fuel hose and that's what you'll be getting. You know, they say up to a third of a gallon or more, but I don't want any if, if I'm <laughs> if I'm uh, paying for the good stuff. I want all good stuff. Hey, real quick, Will, um, let's ask everybody in the super super chat. How many people use ethanol free gas um, opposed to regular uh, ethanol ethanol gas? Yeah. Thanks, Will. Sure. And feel free to stop me at any time. Anyone on the panel? I mean, this is not a PowerPoint presentation. So uh, just, you know, feel free to ask me anything. Um, the next thing I did is I checked into, not that I would do this, but there are some that probably uh, would do it. And you might find yourself in a pinch sometime and need to do it because that's, you insist on using ethanol free fuel. Obviously, it's a lot more expensive than regular fuel, but you can make your own. And from from what I investigated, it's you take 26 ounces of water, throw it in a gallon of uh, fuel, and just let it set for a good period of time, and then siphon off the good stuff from the top. But one thing you have to keep in mind is that the uh, ethanol actually increases the octane of the fuel. So if you remove the ethanol, you will also be reducing the octane. So if you start with a higher regular unleaded uh, octane, then when you remove the octane, you're bringing it down. I don't know how much it brings it down, but that's just something to take into consideration. What was uh, just, it, I learned a lot doing these videos um, myself because I try to put, you know, good information out there. I try not to just, I don't know that anything that I present on a video is something that somebody has told me or something that I have learned. It's not that I'm a smart person. Um, it's just, uh, if I, if I hear something that's kind of cool, I just want to throw it out there to the community and, and, uh, yeah, so there's that. All right. So next up, let's see, see like this, for example, that's a preset, uh, torque wrench. So already set to seven Newton meters. And uh, Mark McElroy was kind enough to share this with me. They're 20 bucks on Amazon and real handy to, you don't have to keep your, your big torque wrench or whatever. You just, uh, you'll find, I think that if the more handy things are, the more likely you are to do it on a regular basis. So that's why things like this uh, interest me. Preset, press to cycle, uh, torque wrench, 20 bucks on Amazon. Yeah, I bought one of those. I mean, you can get, whatever Newton meter. I don't know what the lowest is they got, but I think they got from four all the way up to 10 Newton meters for that wrench. Yep. You know, your prop is usually seven or eight Newton meters. So that works great. I mean, it's, it's a quick tool you can carry around with you instead of a gigantic torque wrench, you know, especially if you're going to a flying or something. So you can still check the torque on your prop. Yep. Yeah, this is a beautiful sunset shot, but I forgot to throw something extra in there. Anyways, this is talking about second chances. Um, I mean, it's kind of my, my, my personal story, too, because it just, I don't know, it just almost feels like when you enter the sport, and, and I, don't, I don't mean to be cheesy by saying this, it just kind of feels like a rebirth, a reset, like you hit the reset button. So um, yeah, that's kind of whatever. So uh, this is where I talk about, I didn't want the world to pass me by. I just kind of, you know, a lot of times you get a cool idea. Uh, and if you're one of the, one of the people that are sitting on the couch or you're listening to this while you're driving, wondering, Hey, you know, I I'd really like to do that. And then you start talking to yourself out of it, man, that's a bunch of crap. 
uh, you can do this sport if you really want to do it and you're interested in flying. This is an awesome, awesome way to experience it. And as a matter of fact, I've got thousands of hours in an airplane, but not one of them has come close to the to flying a paramotor as far as the feeling of flight and the freedom that uh, uh, comes along with it. So, yeah. See, that's what you mean by that. That whole rebirth thing you were talking about, you're looking at the world from a whole different perspective flying yes. like that. So yeah. that's why I think you feel like it's a rebirth because you look at everything differently once you start flying a paramount. Yeah. Yeah, you know, let, let's talk about that for, for a little bit, because I, I might have even mentioned that in a previous video. But every time I fly, uh, I, when I land, I feel better, you know, and the problems, whatever's, you know, rolling around in my head before I left, it flying actually just kind of puts things like you said, Steve, in into perspective, you know, yeah, um, it, it's not. When you're down on the earth, you feel, you feel like this little ant, you know, or whatever, and you're near flying. It's just like, oh man, this is beautiful. And you kind of, you kind of get to see the big picture and in some way that uh, just kind of helps me out there. So. Uh, I got a question for everybody in the super chat. How often are you guys able to fly per week on average during the summertime, like just a day per week? week maybe a couple uh days per week and then how many hours do you get to fly i'm curious i'll be watching the super chat that's a good question and i can't see the chat so if there are any questions i can't see them so someone can chime in i guess i don't um, see any questions yet but okay you're good all right so this is uh just me you know clipping in getting ready and uh getting ready to, to Go fly. This is a Brian Waller's place. He's got an awesome, awesome setup down there in Alabama. That's a Mark McElroy. That's Shane. Never trust the Shane, uh, skinny chef Shane. That's Ben Lorenzi at his place. Uh, this is a good point that you might not know about. If you're in the sport, though, for a while, you will definitely hear about it because a farmer will bring it to your attention. But uh, it, it's best to stay clear of uh, livestock. I mean, a cow is a cow, but man, it's money to that farmer. <laughs> like that. Steer clear. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. So um, you don't want to be responsible for, uh, you know, injuring a calf or a cow or my gosh, a horse. Um, because, uh, yeah, they take that stuff real serious. And we try to be good neighbors as best we can. And um, it, it'll serve you well. It really will. I can't tell you how many. As a matter of fact, just recently, uh, when you land, if you have to land out, you're probably going to end up landing out in a farmer's field. So <laughs> it uh, it doesn't pay them, you know, whatever. So the right here is we're talking about cloud clearances. What was that? That's good. I love the animation. It's very yeah, creative. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah. cloud, cloud clearances and visibility, a lot of people struggle with that. There's uh, airspace that you have to learn. And then there's the cloud, the visibility requirements and the cloud clearances for each separate uh, airspace that you're flying in. The nice thing though about, before I even get into this, the nice thing is, is we're gonna fly in class G and in class E airspace. On occasion, you might find yourself with permission flying in other airspaces, um, but, uh, if you remember the rule and stick to the rule, you will cover just about all of your flying, unless you're flying in some other type of uh, airspace. And the rule is three statute miles visibility, 500 feet below the cloud, 1,000 feet above, 2,000 feet horizontal. If you remember that, you'll be golden because uh, the others will be less than that, and that would be class G airspace. So if you remember the rule, there's three exceptions. One is class G, which is one statue miles, and you just have to stay away from the clouds. Class B is three statue miles, and you just have to stay away from the clouds, but you should stay away from class B altogether. <laughs> 10,000 feet and above, now that might come in to play if uh, you, know, you like to fly a little higher, 
Um, but uh, five statute miles is the visibility requirement. And you have to stay a thousand feet up and below a cloud and a mile horizontal. The reason, if you understand the reason behind why they have different cloud clearance and visibility requirements, it makes it, it, it it's easier to understand. But the reason is above 10,000 feet, there is no speed limit. So you need more time to react than, uh, just don't create a sonic boom, but you need more time to react to uh, oncoming traffic, especially when you're, which even when you're under instrument conditions, it's still your requirement to, if you can, and you're flying in visually uh, VFR conditions, you still have to maintain separation from other aircraft. But uh, that's the reason that the, uh, um, the clearances increase. Well, um, when I go up over 10,000 um, MSL, I always go really super fast and uh, create a uh, sonic boom. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so so that, that's a question. Okay, so I what I just said, though, is, uh, so then why would, let's see if I can get to it. In class G airspace, let me find it, sorry. Okay, so three stacks. And while you're and while you're trying and while you're trying to find that, uh, you guys in the super chat, uh, do me do me a favor. Do you know what statute miles mean and nautical miles mean? If you do, uh, put them in the super chat. So in case someone else does not know, they will now know. That's true. Very true. So um, if it's three statute miles, five hundred below, a thousand above. That's just, that's called standard. That's the standard. And if you stick to the, the, the standard, you'll be covered. So the, the funny thing is why though, would it be three statute miles and just remain clear clouds in class B? You would think it would be more. But the reason is because it's so tightly controlled. You have to have a clearance, not permission, you have to have a clearance. You have to actually hear the words cleared to enter class Bravo airspace. If you don't hear those words, you cannot go in. So that's the reason uh, they can you know, bring the uh, minimums down there. Uh, da, 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 da. We talked about that, the separation. And what else, what's next, what's next? Okay, yeah, so yeah, talking about giving each other time to uh, maneuver around each other and avoid contact. And it also, did you see that jet coming out of there? It also, and I've had this happen as a, as a BFR pilot. I've had aircraft come out of clouds and I understood the reason why you need to stay clear of clouds at that point as a new pilot. So, Oh, that's old Brian Waller. This is at Brian Waller's field with uh, um, that's PPG, the other Nick there. There's uh, Paramotor NC and Brian Waller. All right. So at this point, we're getting into uh, talking about these springs right here. There's one, two, and there's a third one in the back. And then there's one, two, and then two more in the back. Those springs are the only thing that keep that elbow on. So uh, Brian was telling me that I need to uh, spray some WD-40 in there after each flight, because I was telling him at this point, mine doesn't move, it's locked in there. And he's saying, yeah, it, it, it does. So he's pointing to where you spray the WD-40, which I'll show you here in a second, right there. And then down below, right there. And uh, some people kind of, hit it with the soft part of their uh, hand after each flight just to make sure it doesn't freeze up. So I told I told Brian thank you and that I understood, but I never did it. And a month later I'm looking at <laughs> looking at my exhaust. I'm like, oh man, please tell me that's not a crack. And yeah, sure enough. So I wet my finger, tried to wipe it away. It didn't wipe away and I knew that uh, I wasn't going to be flying that day. Um, so this is where, and this is a shout out to the whole thing is basically a shout out to, uh, um, Sports. Sports USA, 
those guys rock. I mean, they really work hard. You order something and boom. I added a little cow doing some kiting in the background. See, I have fun with these uh, with these videos, trying to come up with little ideas and stuff like that. Um, I ac actually, I actually uh, ordered that elbow from them and the parts that I needed. And then after it was shipped, I realized, dang it, I shipped it to the wrong freaking address. Uh -oh. So he worked, he worked back behind the scenes and uh, he got it. He made it right for me. And uh, you need something, go to Sky Sports. You won't be disappointed. All right. So at this point, I'm just talking about uh, it costs the cost to uh, make the repairs about 250 bucks. Note, though, let me go back. The uh, what I used to pull the spring with was this down. Can you all see my mouse? Yep. Okay. I use this little set right here because it was cheap and uh, yeah, because it was cheap. <laughs> so it's a pick set is what that is. And I use this particular tool right here. I'll talk about that later. So I was worried because I didn't, I'm not a big maintenance guy and uh, wasn't sure that I could do this. So I checked, you know, with my buddies and they said, yeah, 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 you can do it. I didn't even know it was the springs that we're holding it on. I figured there were bolts or something. There's safety wire uh, and the springs. And yeah, it it was easy, but it would have been a lot easier if I didn't use this tool right here. And I talked to you about it, Sean. You use a spring pull tool. And man, that would have made life a lot easier. This was like the hottest freaking day. Um, uh, yeah, the spring, there. there's a couple of different types of spring pull spring pullers and the ones that i like personally are the ones that have a uh, where you grip it there's actually some uh some foam or something around it because when you're pulling you want some sort of uh you want something because most of most of the cheap ones like the seven dollar eight dollar ones they are just metal where you pull um but on the grip it's, grip itself there are some that actually has some really nice uh, soft grip and it makes it a lot easier when you are pulling springs. Pulling, pulling no, springs. no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. And, and yeah, I mean, when they say if you're going to own a paramotor, you will become a two-stroke two motor <laughs> expert when, you, when it's all said and done. But having the right tool really does make all the difference in the world. So uh, we'll come to this, but you see how much fuel I have in my tank right there? Can you tell? Yep. I'm not saying the exact number. Just just take note of how much fuel I had in my tank. Got it. And we'll come to that. So I got uh, I got the springs off. I got the new exhaust on. And uh, yeah, that went really well. I just got to put the safety wire back on it. And uh, we'll call that a job done. This was something that I discovered uh, that Dr. Francis Regalo made the first flexible wing. And his wife made the first, the material she used for like kitchen curtains. Um, so that was kind of interesting. And he's the one who coined the word crispy that denotes the newness of a wing. Does he also, did he also uh, coin the word uh, regarlo, regarlo with the, um, with the, color, with the uh, shape of the wing? I bet you he did because yeah. that, that would be him. I mean, the regalo, airfoil or the regalo wing um this is you know the sport it, it probably when people first hear about it they get excited about it and they probably don't realize that this has been a long time in the making and there's a lot that has gone before us okay a couple of people are asking will what about the heat shrink to go over your springs are yeah you, i you, am okay that's a good idea. And I, I actually uh, uh, sent in a uh, message to Bitterazi. I wanted the specific reason for the heat shrink. And uh, the, the reason is it keeps the, it keeps it from vibrating. Right. Uh, but if you're going to use the heat shrink, it's my understanding that you want to use the correct type of heat shrink. Because my fear was or is that the heat shrink keeps the spring from actually being a spring, you know, that, that would be my fear. Uh, so I understand that there's different types of heat shrink and 
uh, I, I don't have the information yet, so I don't know, but I will before I put it on there. The most important thing for me is the uh, safety wire. Um, and even with the safety wire, the specific types of safety wire you need to use, you can't just <laughs> buy picture framing, whatever picture hanging. And the reason I know that is because I bought the picture hanging <laughs> wire. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> are there any other questions, Steve? Uh, no, that was okay. it. All right. So we're moving on. Uh, what's next? What's next? What's next? Oh, yeah. Okay. So the next little skit was, uh, and this was not set up. This This is not this was not designed for this. I actually had to take Brian Waller's body and put him in there. He was, those two were never anywhere close to each other with an ax, I assure you. <laughs> but uh, I was funny. trying, I was trying to, uh, you see what happens here. Okay, let me redo it, reset it. <laughs> <laughs> the idea oh was paramotor ground starting and mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of implant the idea that if you're thinking about grand ground starting, think about it from this, uh, like, like this, you know, cause this is, this is kind of what you're trying to do here. So Brian, uh, on the right, he lifts up the ax and just as he lifts it up, he yells clear log. And then just as he starts to bring it down, he yells clear prop and that's where brian's like what <laughs> and then brian says sorry about that so anyways that's brian waller taking off and uh coming to the end here so here's the paramotor hazards like it causes language disabilities and friendship lossation and uh anyone who's in the sport will know what i'm talking about before long um so this is Brian and I just just uh, hanging out. And the only words we're saying back and forth to each other is the word paramotor, because that's all we care about. That's all we want to talk about. So paramotor, 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 okay. paramotor. <laughs> and then <clears throat> this uh, this is Adam. He comes up and he says, uh, what did you guys think of the game last night? And we look at him and we say, paramotor? Brian's like, <laughs> <laughs> Adam just walks away disgusted. That's great. <laughs> so, uh, military time. Most people know how to do military time. I just threw it in there because you might find you bump into it. Uh, I'm not really going to give an explanation on that. Uh, it's <laughs> it's pretty pretty basic. Play of a wheel. I mean, oh, <laughs> if, if it's big certain, clock. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if it has, uh, if the time's great, the equal to or greater than 1300, just subtract 12, and that'll give you the time in military, <clears throat> if it's less than 1300, you don't have to do any math. You just put a colon in the uh, middle and boom, you're all set. And let's see what's coming up next. All right, so that's my buddy, Dana Sheets. This guy is a, I mean, he's just, he knows his stuff and when it comes to paramotoring, but he gave me an idea and I want, I want to preface this with, I'm not suggesting that people do it. This is just something, wow. another tool that I have in my uh, toolbox that I can use or try, see if I like it, if I don't, whatever. Um, so I'm not suggesting that people do this. However, I did it and it did help. And I'll talk more about it later. Um, I was wanting my wing to pop up a little bit quicker than it was. <clears throat> my wing's got some age to it and uh, it, it's, it's a little, little lazy maybe, but uh, let me go back. So, oh shoot, I didn't have to go back. Yeah, right there is where we hold our A's, right? So to get that little extra pop, instead, I grab the A's there. Now, when I say grab, you, you gotta be careful with this because you can't get your fingers stuck in a quick link and that would hurt. So it's just a very light, light hold it's not you're not you know holding on to it for dear life it's just a light hold and then as soon as you as soon as it you feel the pressure you get pop it'll pop right out of your hands um so i did that and it did help cage the reason i'm i'm hesitant uh, about even talking about this is the cage 
uh, a lot of people's cages aren't, you don't have big cages. So that puts your arms even further out. So do what your instructor tells you to do on that. Uh, and then the last thing I talked about is how to get your paramotor from point A to point LZ. And uh, I kind of had trouble with this in the beginning, but uh, I, what I found is there's just, you can, if you, if you can do it, do it. I mean, just, uh, there are so many different options that uh, most people just go and they buy one of the racks from uh, Harbor Freight or Tractor Supply and, uh, and use that. Other people, uh, <laughs> like this guy, Cole Davenport, this is his rig and how he gets his uh, motor from point A to point Z. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, that thing is wild. And it was nice of him to put that little clip together for me. This guy, Danny Williamson, this is what he drives. And he found a way to do it. You know, mm. uh, he, talks, he talks about, uh, you know, how he put it together and everything. Mm. And then I'm going to skip. And this guy, I don't know who this was, some guy named Stephen Andrews. He, uh, <laughs> uh, now, this is one of the racks. Did you get that, Steve, from uh, Harbor Freight? Yeah, the actual metal rack is is just one of the Harbor Freight racks, and then I um, I cut out the plywood there to run across it, and I basically drilled through the wood and the metal on the rack so that I could bolt that down. Then the wood, the other wood that's on there, is bolted down into that wood. Okay. Yeah. I gotcha. And you got a big, you got a big cage. Oh yeah, that's that's a 150 cage with a 140 prop on it. It's it's huge. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's real nice. It's real nice to the the, the the better the system you come up with, and by better I mean secure and easy to use. Like it's yeah. just nothing better to just set your <laughs> your motor on a platform and just like what you did there, Steve. Boom, and you're. And that holds it great. I still use a strap though. I'm not going to trust just that. I still put a strap on it. So. Yep. Yeah, and this is what I used when I used uh, uh, would uh, take my motor around in my Rav Four. Um, I this had this custom made. I took the design from my buddy, and then I added a few things to it. And it that thing's been rock solid. It was like one hundred and sixty dollars to make. To your point, see those holes right there. Mm -hmm. I added those so that I could also strap it down like you were talking about. Yeah. And the motor just set, sits right in that groove in the front. And in the back, it latches into those metal uh, teeth or whatever there. Boom, boom. And then just set it down in there. Very nice. The holes, I added those so that I had a way of actually locking the motor if I needed to. Somebody wants to steal something, they're going to steal it. <laughs> but you know, try to make. I like, it I like that you can flip that one over. So if you're multi motor, you... yes, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it, right. So on this side it, is the motor. And when it comes to locks, locks are to keep honest people honest. That's exactly right. If the, someone wants to steal something, they'll find they'll find a way. Um, the uh, on this side of the rack is the the paramotor that I fly now but it was also designed, I could use the other side for a Parajet Maverick because I used to have one of those. So depending on what motor uh, I'm using, you know, boom. If you need to, to transport your motor, there's, <laughs> there's a way to do it. Mm -hmm. I saw this down at, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, fly it for gauge. And then lastly, the blooper. So I'm doing a little part of the skit and there's this uh, wasp that's been terrorizing me the whole time. And there he is. <laughs> and then as soon as I turn around, he's like right there. And I <laughs> went to smack him away and <laughs> threw the box. <laughs> <laughs> so Great. Uh, and last, am I, uh, am I getting in trouble with time? Okay. Yes. I'm going to stop sharing and uh, there we go. So uh, real quick, real quick, um, before you continue and, and make a note of what you're going to say, uh, when everyone is tying down their motors, I think that people are forgetting 
that their motors are being held on by four bolts and motor mounts. If you go over potholes or anything like that, your motor mounts can shear. So what yeah. you want to be able to do is to tie your motor up and to the frame during tra transportation. If you That's don't, good point. They, yeah, they will shear. And the thing is, when you do a pre-flight after you, uh, like, let's say that you go to a fly-in, right? Of course, you have your motor on the back, but you hit a couple of bumps and it will, sh it might shear one of those motor mounts. And if it does, you can't see it on a pre-flight, but you'll be able to feel it when your motor starts going I know. Do they, do they get more time? Uh, bobblehead? Yeah, yeah. You'll be when fine. You start, when you start bobblehead and you know something's going on. Yeah. So be really careful, guys, when you transport your motors that you find some way of keeping that mo motor tight up against your frame so it doesn't bounce on your motor mounts. That's my sense today. That's a, that's a really good point. Uh, remember I mentioned Dana Sheets. He was in that last video. He actually, when he transports his motor, will take the prop off. He, trans he uses a, um, a trailer. He takes the prop off, puts the uh, motor uh, against the frame, uh, against the um, wall of the trailer. But then he has a piece of wood that comes up and it actually supports the motor itself. Yes. So there's no weight on the motor as, you know, as you're going over bumps or whatever. So that's a real yeah. good point. Yeah, especially also, too, if you uh, uh, transport a trike, you want to be really careful that you um, put something underneath the trike to keep it from bouncing and possibly uh, hurting your your motor, your motor mounts or even your axles. Uh, one of our machines we uh, took from uh, Florida and brought it back over here, we hit a couple of bumps and we did not support the trike itself. And it actually broke a, a, a um, um, an axle while it's on the tra uh, trailer. Oh my gosh! You broke the axle. It broke the axle because we did Just not have the weight of the. Wow. Oh. Yeah, because the trailer would bounce, and we went through some crappy ass roads, you know, a lot of holes, potholes, and things like that. And just the regular bounce, it bounced hard enough. It ac actually broke an axle. So yeah, support your trikes, support your motors, your motor mounts um, are very fragile, uh, even possibly your uh, carbon fiber uh, axle on your trike could break. And support your vets. Support your vets. Absolutely. All right, well, thank you very much, Will. And you were gonna say something before I interrupt. So, yeah, well, one was last thing. One last thing. Uh, remember, I said note take note of the fuel that was in the tank. Right. Okay. So I hadn't been flying in over a month. So what? Three days ago, four days ago. I don't know. I, I went oh. out and <laughs> and I had an awesome freaking flight. I took off. Just it was just a beautiful day, and it felt good to get back after not doing it for so long. And just felt good to be up there. And I was even you know flying low over this field and everything and had the a lady stop and she was taking video of me. So I was, you know, I doing a little Kodak stuff, but nothing dangerous. I was just getting closer to her so she could get some good shots. And then as I was leaving, I got some altitude. And then I said, you know what, I'm going to go back around for one more time. So I came back around and I did, uh, it was a, I wouldn't, it was not a steep spiral by any stretch of the imagination because uh, I've had it happen quite a few times where my motor dies in a steep spiral, it's just going to happen or could happen without, you know, maintaining some throttle. But as soon as I came back around, my motor died. And I'm thinking, oh, man. So I'm like, wah, wah. <laughs> it took me like six times. It's amazing what you can do. It ain't got no gaze in it. <laughs> no, I'll get away. So I got it cranked back up and then I proceeded on. And then it died again. And at that point, I knew I had run out of freaking fuel. So oh, where no. I had went wrong was, number one, I let complacency rule. And uh, I had that cracked exhaust, right? In my mind, I had filled up, was ready to go, and then saw the crack. In reality, I went to pull my motor out to put fuel in it to go flying so I didn't, I assumed in my head, I had a full tank of fuel. So 
don't assume. <laughs> it was a great landing. Right. It was a, a, a land out. I just called my buddy, picked me up. And uh, so anyway, I got a question for you guys, because me and Shane, uh, Never Trust Skinny Chef Shane, were talking the other night. And, and I don't know which one of us brought up the point, but say you're at a fly-in somewhere or you're just at a field and there's another paramotor pilot that's getting ready to take off. Now, just say it's me. Like, I don't have that much, much experience. But you look over and they're doing a reverse launch. But both of their lines are hooked straight to their harness. When do you say something? I mean, what do you mean their lines are hooked to their harness? Okay. They're not being hooked crossed. for a forward launch. That's the way their lines are going to their harness instead of crossed, like for a reverse launch. They were coming straight. Yeah, I would say something to them. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's extreme. Yeah, that, that'd be extremely yeah. dangerous. If no, it's really dangerous. But then they're they're like, um, oh, yeah, but I've done this two years this way. And I'm like, no, I don't think so. But I mean, some pilots you can come talk to and they're like, oh, thank you so much for catching that. But then you got other ones that's like, you can't tell me how to freaking take off, blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, when when is it okay to say something to somebody? And what gives you the right to tell them how to take off? I don't know. I'm, I'm just, that's. I, I, don't, I don't think it's like a, you, you, you're telling them what to do. You can say um, so, something like um, uh, maybe take note that um, it looks like your risers are not turned around correctly or right. or maybe uh you know uh, hey double check because something doesn't look right on my side so double check before you take off i mean you can do it to where it's not like hey you got to do this because i'm smarter right. than you nobody wants that right so right maybe a good pc way of doing it would be kind of like hey you might want to check your risers something doesn't look right on my side yeah I mean, and then you did your due diligence you did what you could okay that that makes sense my uh and i feel i feel the same way so the only real reason i would say something that's my that crossing the line would be a safety issue like an immediate safety right. like that would be one of them and yeah. it's all in the presentation too i mean i i would probably say something like hey man i sorry to mention this but i'd want someone to tell me because i whatever and right. i think your lines yeah. are hooked up wrong yeah. you know um because uh, you know, well, I see you're about to take off, but you don't have that much gas. <laughs> Where were you when I needed you, man? You didn't even have my back, and then you laughed at me. <laughs> I posted. Uh, I posted just before that. I posted a picture of me and my feet up in the air and how good it felt and stuff. Yeah. And soon after that, boom! There I am in a soybean field. <laughs> That's crazy, but you know, I think it's happened to everybody. Everybody you know, for, forgot about the gas or went too far, you know, uh, with the wind and turned around and said, oh, crap, I'm not going to make it. Yeah. I, think, I think it happens to everybody. Um, but just to let everybody know tonight, uh, this video, this podcast is sponsored by runintothesky.org. And of course, even though Run to the Sky is sponsoring this, we definitely need your help. Exactly. If you see... Yes, it is. If you uh, look in the description down below, we do have runtothesky.org slash donation. If you're able to do that, please do so. Also, we are still doing the raffle for the um, the reserve. So we need at least $1,000. So the more you donate, the more uh, raffle tickets can go out and we'll be able to do that raffle as soon as we make some money uh over at run to this guy because uh like we have a school that we're being uh, that we're built building you know we have uh, we poured this lab we got builders coming over so we got a lot of money uh personal money and uh other donations going to this and we need to refund or or we need to restock, get, restock. <laughs> yeah <laughs> restock a little bit so we can continue to do this and get more people uh through our school but uh definitely thank you everybody run into the sky dot org um so thank you very much will we definitely appreciate that if you haven't done so already uh check out uh willflyppg.com that is his YouTube channel. He uh, just, uh, I guess, launched. I like that launch. Yeah. Just launched just 
the tip 11.0. So make sure you go over to willflyppg.com. It forwards over to his YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification. We also are going to be giving a way something tonight we're going to be giving away a throttle magnet you know the magnets that you put on your throttle and then put on your on your harness or something like that so when you have your throttle in your hand and you land you just go like that it pops onto that magnet and now you're golden not when you're flying obviously but when you land you can pop it on there when you put your paramotor on your back it's still right there now you can pop it off really easy and then pop it back on so that's what we're giving away tonight and um uh, so make sure you say hello to will fly so he can put you on the spinny whip will of winnie things that was a will hiccup <laughs> hey, uh, James uses ethanol free, and so does C Science. And check to see if there were any other respondents. Oh, Bill H does. Yeah, yeah. I can drive yeah. 22 miles to get some ethanol free. I'm surprised there's no other stations around here where I can get ethanol free gas. The other Nick that uh, he does. They are all over the place over here. I mean, mm -hmm. it's yeah. it's actually hard it's to nice. find. It's hard to find a gas gas station that doesn't have ethanol Good. free so it's very possible they have it but it's only on one pump because a lot of the gas stations that i go to is only one pump so you got to find that one pump that has yeah. that ethanol free uh, they just may not be listed on the that's possible. Here, yes. okay so a shout out to chris carlos uh he is the one that's going to be uh donating this to uh run to the sky this is kind of like like what it looks like these here boop, and then they i love those things i use them yeah so oh, yeah so they have some that are yeah, just mine. really weak but some of them are extremely strong which of course you you need when you have a, a throttle you don't want that thing to pop off and uh, drag on the ground um but anyways like i said a shout out to chris carlos for donating this to the show tonight uh, make sure you at will fly in the super chat and uh, say hey i'm here i want to be on the spinny will mm -hmm. uh, also tonight we have scuba steve i know that he's been longing to talk about these ppg smoke helmets and uh mm -hmm. scuba steve welcome to the show and tell us all, all about your noise oh. canceling amazing ppg smoke headsets that are awesome awesome opossum oh okay well I have mine set up on my helmet. Now, um, these are, if you already have a helmet and you already have some 3M Pelter uh, ear cups, then you're good to go. The, the headset literally just snaps into those. You got a PTT button on one side. You have a slot for one radio. So you can either hook your two MIDI radio or your AV radio up. You can't do both at the same time. So they only have one port now instead of two. And the reason behind that is they said in order to add all the noise cancellation stuff, they had to take one of the ports away. Um, the mic, the boom mic is detachable. This literally just pops in so you can just pull this thing right out. Um, that's right. Yeah, so that's it's, it it's kind of an ambidextrous mic. So if you want your mic to be, I got cat hair on my, um, if you want your mic on the other side, you would just hook your heads head cups up the other way, then your PTT button would be on your right. This works out great for me because my throttle hand is my right hand. So my left hand is free to push the PTT button. Um, um, real quick, Scuba Steve, it looks like you got a really busy helmet. Can you tell us what's on the helmet? I mean, I see a couple sure. of... Sure. All right. Well, it wasn't that busy until like today. Uh, what The way I have it set up now, so I just plugged in my GoPro. So um, this is the GoPro 10, um, and then I have, this is called an audio adapter, which when you yeah. look them up on Amazon, they say they only work for like the GoPro 8 or 9, but the box literally says that it goes all the way up to GoPro 11. So on one side, you just have a USB-C coming out, and normally the GoPro does not have a hole for you to hook a USB-C cable in. You have to buy this plate, which is like 11 bucks that has a hole in the bottom so that you can plug your cable in. Otherwise, you have to use the media mod, and we're gonna, I'll tell you all about that in a minute. That's um, what we use it. I like the media mod. Yeah, the media mod's great, but Ryan Roberts came onto my YouTube and said, 
We've only tested the headset with the audio adapter. Get rid of the media mod, use the audio adapter. So I went and bought the audio adapter. Now okay. this side has um, a USB-C connector, so you can plug a battery pack, which I have on here, into that, and it also charges the GoPro. So if you need more battery life out of your GoPro, this will constantly charge your GoPro while you're filming. So instead of getting 40 minutes to an hour, you get a lot longer. This is a 10,000 mAh, I think, a little over almost 11,000 mAh battery pack. And that'll keep me filming longer than I'll ever have a flight probably. So that works out great. Um, real I quick, have, real quick, Scuba Steve, um, what is your average flight time? Um, my last flight was over two hours. So wow. yeah, well, I was flying over the beach. So and when you're over, when you're flying over the beach, you're going to stay up as long as possible. I flew until I was literally about to run out of gas, and then I landed. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, I, I stayed up a while, and you know it, we were flying by Kitty Hawk, which uh, Will said he flew over there. So yeah, we we're flying right on the beach at Kitty Hawk, and I, I posted a video of it. Um, <laughs> that was before I got this headset, though. So don't compare the audio you get from that to this because. Uh, I did post one review of the headset so far, but that was before I got the audio adapter. Now, what I will say, that review that I posted was using the media mod, and they told me not to use that because it was it was giving feedback. Now, I didn't hear the feedback, but one person in the comments said they heard feedback. Maybe it did. I know that the headset itself works good from idle all the way through cruise, until you get to full throttle. When you get to full throttle on the media mod, it's you can hear the motor really loud, but you can also hear what I'm saying. When I use the audio adapter, you hear the motor, but you can't hear what I'm saying. So I think personally, the media mod works better than the audio adapter. Mm -hmm. I may end up switching back to the media mod. It's less stuff that I got to hook up. And it, it just sounded better to me. So what I plan on doing, I tried to do it yesterday or the day before, but this is the problem I was having. This mic, if you move this around too much, it kind of crackles and it shouldn't be doing that. So I think I've got it fixed now. Um, I don't know what the deal was, but it was crackling. And this mic, you have to have it pointed the right way towards your mouth. And you'll see inside here, you got a, uh, well, there's one side that's got a crevice in it, and that's where you're supposed to be talking. The other side also has mics, but it, that you need to talk in the spot where the little crevice is that uh, is for all your noise canceling and stuff. And you so the noise canceling is on the noise canceling is on the outside, and then your mic microphone part has to be on the inside. Exactly, that's exactly. So. You want the mic, I would say, within an inch of your mouth. If it gets further away than that, it's going to sound like you're you're far away from the microphone, even though you're not. Um, I don't know about battery life yet because I haven't, you know, I haven't technically went and flown with this. I just had the motor on my back testing it in the backyard. That's all I did. Um, I can tell you the... The Baofeng radio using the regular Cena adapter you can buy from Amazon works absolutely flawless. The PTT button works. Everything works great. With that being said, I bought the cable that's supposed to go for the Yaisu, which is my aviation radio. Now, this one, I can hear the radio, and I looked at all the pinouts, and it looks like if I hit the PTT button on the AV radio, it will transmit. But if I hit the PTT button on the headset, it doesn't transmit. Apparently, that cable's not made for this specific radio. Now, I know other people that have the uh, the Icon radio. Those seem to work fine. I'm going to figure out a way to make it work with mine. But, I mean, I rarely use my AV radio. Now, what I may end up doing is just talking to Langley on this and then putting it away and then just run my Balfang, which is the one I communicate to everybody with is that one. So the radios worked great with it. Phone calls worked great with it. Music sounded amazing on the thing. The gel head cups on this, I don't know if y'all can tell, but these gel head cups are really soft and cushy. 
this is this is actually a very comfortable headset to wear. What were um, you using before, Steve? What was I using before? I can show you one of them. These are the 3M Pelter head cups that I had on there before. Um, now, I don't have all the cables and stuff in there, but this is what was on there before. Okay. Yeah. These aren't these aren't gel. These are more of a foam in there. But the ones that came with that is, uh, yeah, if I, put, if I grab the other headset, there's a bunch of cables hanging off this one. And I just cut a notch in there and then pop the head cup back on so that I could run all these cables. It looks a lot more neat when I have it together, but not as neat as the um, smoke headset. But what I'm trying to do, it, what the next video that I make, as soon as I get some time, and it's, it's been raining like, it'll rain for two hours, then stop for 30 minutes, then rain another two hours. We're getting some weird weather right now, but as soon as I get a chance, or if I get to fly, I'm gonna go test the headset flying, which will be, I think, the best way to test it. And um, also hopefully get somebody on the radio with it. Hey, uh, who, who was it? Bill H says you have more in that helmet than he does in his old paramotor. <laughs> <laughs> Is it worth five hundred dollars, Tony? That you know, I can't tell you which way to go on that. That's that's completely up to you. Um, right now, I'm still testing it. I can't give my honest, honest. You know, as far for what I need it to do, it does great. The two meter radio works good. Head phone calls work great, and the uh, the music sounds amazing on there. The music is honestly too loud. I have to turn it down, so you can't even hear your motor when the music's turned up. I hear no motor at all. <laughs> it's just just that, plain that's, music. That's freaking. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. Have you used any other type of noise canceling? to you know like maybe like like will and i use the bose noise canceling um, right have you used any other type of uh no noise canceling to judge the difference between this particular noise canceling and something else hmm well i did film part of that video at the very end i used my iphone which should have noise some noise canceling i don't know but um that was a lot louder. You could not hear what I was saying at the end of the video. Once I got to full um, throttle, you couldn't hear a word I was saying. But I, and I have Apple. I got AirPods Pro. I got some Bose ones. I got uh, Beats. I got all kinds of headphones. Um, but I wanted something that I could take up and not have to worry about eight million wires, and that connected really good with Bluetooth. Now the Bluetooth on my phone hasn't worked really good since I submerged it in water um but it still works okay yeah that I'd have to try it with a better phone but yeah the cena 10 um hands down the best yeah now cena cena makes a good headset i, I can't complain with that either um yeah which which ones have uh, people used and which ones do they like the best because the only ones that i've done so far as is the 10 R and it works great. I mean, they're amazing, but they don't have really good noise cancellation. Yeah. If you fly with noise cancellation that works, you will never want to fly without it. Ain't that the truth? I can definitely tell that it's, there's noise canceling in this. I mean, it's obviously not a hundred percent. I think it would be weird if you made a video of you flying and you couldn't hear the motor at all. It was completely silent, but talking, that would be weird. But I mean- And, and not good. You need to be able to hear the motor. Right, right. So I, I like I like that it has a little bit. And I mean, honestly, how long are you gonna be on idle and all the way up through cruise? I'd say I was well above 6,000 RPM before I could really start to notice that it was getting loud in the headset. So cruising, it should be a no-brainer. It's, it's it sounds fine for that. Mm. Okay, pretty interesting. But like I said, I'm going to get a review done soon with the audio adapter and also with the media mod, and then y'all can y'all can decide on which which one sounds best and let me know so I can you know. Well, make where do, where do we go, Scuba Steve, to be able to watch your videos? Um, just go to paramotordude.com. Y'all can go see the last video I did with the PPG smoke headset. It's just me in the backyard with motor on my back. Now that's before I got the audio adapter. That's just with the media mod. And people were saying, oh, it's got feedback. And I'm like, uh, if you say so, 
but everything worked great. And then when I first started the video, the mic was away from my mouth. And then like midway through the video, I moved it closer and it sounded way better. So definitely make sure you keep the mic closer. And you said that you use different types of noise canceling while flying? No, no, not, not usually while flying. Okay. Um, I just have other noise canceling headsets. I don't usually use them while I'm flying. I got, I got headsets hanging up here that have noise canceling on them, but then none of those are made for flying. <laughs> You know, a lot of them are not made for flying, but you know, what Will and I have done is we put the noise canceling uh, boats in and yeah. they work amazing. Um, the Sony earbuds, I put those in before too, and they work great as far as canceling noise. Um, what else do I use? Um, oh, and the, and the int most interesting thing is as far as noise canceling, not, not you, the pilot, but people listening to a conversation is when um, I called Will and I was on the pod, was it the podcast? I can't remember what no, it was. you were actually on the show. Yeah, I was on, actually on the show. I was flying and the only thing that I used was my wired earbuds that came with my iPhone. I mounted my iPhone to my chest mount, put the earbuds in, put the earmuffs over it, Put a dead cat over the uh, microphone, and no one, no one believed that I was actually flying. They could not hear the motor or anything. Yeah. So well, where, where well, did you get the dead cat for for that? I mean, um, you, you can find that? the you can find uh, dead cats on Amazon, and they are so cheap. I think I got a four pack of like five bucks. You have to you have to attach it though, right? I mean, I guess you just go through the wire and then. I I zip tie a lot of things. I didn't mention this, but this this is right here. This uh cord that's you can barely see. There we go. This cord that's my three point five millimeter out that goes up to my GoPro. The good thing that I that I like about this is it records everything. So if I'm making a video to go on YouTube, anything you hear on gaggle, no music, you name it, it all goes through that and gets recorded on the GoPro. So if you if you're trying to do royalty. You know, if you're trying to put music on YouTube, you're going to get in trouble. But, yeah, it records everything. Phone calls, it's all in there. That's hmm. pretty neat. Don't know if I want everybody to hear my phone calls. but Well, yeah, I mean, you can do it either way. But the um, the gaggle information is pretty cool that it comes over. And then also, you know, your two-meter radio. So you can, you know, if you're talking to somebody else in the air, um, that gets recorded. So you hear both sides of the conversation instead of just one side, which you see on 90% of the videos out there. You know what I like to see, uh, Steve, is that you do a live stream with that on because all the GoPros stream live through your phone's yep. um, data. Yeah, I so, can do that. I can do that. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll get to fly here soon. And then I'll, um, I know I got a fly in coming up in September, but that's in September. But maybe we'll take another trip down to Kitty Hawk, even though Will ain't going to come because he's too just lazy. Hey, well, yeah, but look how far, um, what it was that moonshiners is from me. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, moonshiners is close for you, but far for me. I'm not so sure. Yeah, I think you'll find it might be about the same distance. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. You, you just cool. need to fly over to Moonshiners next. That's all. On your paramount. David Wolf, I agree with that um, statement. Yeah, you What's can't that? really say anything back to Ryan Roberts or he will come at you hardcore. I, I, he doesn't take criticism very well. I mean, we're trying to help him by pointing out what issues the headset has. You're supposed to take criticism and then improve your product, not go, you son of a gun, you didn't use the adapter. I said, blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't want to hear all that. Hmm. Yeah. Well, has anyone tried the uh, aviator set yet? There's no, a lot of people that have aren't, that. Aren't those like $1,800? I, I thought they were 1100 I mean, if they're 1800 oh, I wouldn't even oh, consider $1,100, $1,200. I don't know. Um, I just knew that they were really expensive like over a thousand over a thousand dollars and i don't have the budget for that one no no i think most people don't but 
Hey, this is not an easy challenge to meet. You know, good, clear communication has always been a problem for me. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Which where's that little um, communication thing that you had just brought over here? He brought one over here, and this is what we've been putting in all of our helmets. And they're only like, what, 10, 15 bucks on Amazon. Um, and bring a helmet over here, too, that has one on, too, would you? The Envelo or Envelo uh, knockoff? Is that what those are? Um, well, um, they are, actually. If I, I can't read without my glasses, and I'm over at the shop, so I can't really see what these are. But anyways, they're just regular motorcycle um, helmets, um, comms, and mm -hmm. they just fit like this, and it has a microphone. Now, of course, if you put these inside a full face, obviously they work pretty well, but we are not full face. So what we've done is we've taken um, a regular helmet, and what we've done is we've incorporated these into our um, muffs here. All we do is put a little, not even a hole, it's kind of, kind of like a, a little. Eighth inch drill bit, you lay it up against her. And press they can't down, see you. They can't see you or hear you. I don't think they it's can. It's an eighth inch microphone. drill bit. You just lay it down on it and burn it, you know, burn across through it. Yeah. So all we do is we take off the gel, we uh, burn a little groove and uh, put that in. And then we put in the uh, earpiece on that side, run it underneath, and put it in the other side. And for $16, you can take a, a regular helmet like this and have communication Bluetooth that's pretty darn good. We've talked up there yeah. a couple of times on these, and they're not horrible, nope, but they're definitely not you know, aviators. They're definitely not uh, noise canceling, but they will work for 50 15 bucks on Amazon. I guess I could find them on Amazon and show you which ones I got. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to have options if you want to go the cheaper route, especially like if you're doing multiple helmets like that for students, then yeah, you want to go the cheaper route. You can't buy like eight, you know, $1,100 helmets. That doesn't work out very good. <laughs> yeah, David Wolf said, and sorry, Dave, I don't have my phone on me. Um, but he said he uses the Envolo and they're great. And yeah. if it's the same thing I'm thinking of, I purchased, uh, I got this idea from Brian Waller, but I purchased, it's an Envolo knockoff, I guess, but it's just as good. And it was super, super cheap. Wish I could remember the name of that. Scuba is not rich, Tony, not by any means. You were before you bought that. that I know, man, that helmet broke me. <laughs> Will's got all the money. He's the one that built that toy collar camper thingamajigger. There yeah. You go. <laughs> James, James thinks you won the lottery, Sean, because you're building all this fancy schmancy uh, stuff. For, it, for it's definitely not the lottery, but it definitely is um, uh, a lot. A lot of my own savings that I have put into this run to the sky nonprofit to help people run and run into the sky. You know, I, I really enjoy doing this. I really have found my niche and, you know, all my money, all the money that we get for tuition in uh, Paramount, Arkansas, we just put it back into Paramount, Arkansas, and we put it into the new nonprofit. So, you know, I'm not making any money, but the school is really coming up pretty well. And, I really, I really have been enjoying it. So this right here is um, the uh, thing I'm talking about. It's just, let's see. Well, actually, I've tried a bunch of different ones. So 15, 16 bucks motorcycle helmet with Bluetooth. Uh, it charges right here on the microphone itself. So there's no other weird thing that's on top of your um, uh, helmet like these. Like these things right here, it's a snag hazard right if you get something like these so i've been searching for different things and they're more expensive i've been searching for different things and uh, this is what we came up with and um i'm not sure how long the battery lasts in these but uh we go up for an hour was an hour flight hour and a half hour and a half flight and 
They lasted, oh, there it is. 48 hours working time, 80 hour standby time. So yeah, hmm. batteries last a, a good long time and they're USB-C uh, charge connect, connector. So I like them. And I don't know if anybody else has anything like this. And if you have, uh, uh, definitely let us know in the super chat. Uh, what do you use for comms? I mean, Scuba Steve is. And how much are the ones from PPD Smoke? Just the comms themselves. Uh, five forty nine. Five forty nine plus. Then you have your own helmet that you got to yeah. mount them on. Right? You got to get your own helmet. Yeah, they're they're planning on releasing a hardware kit for like twenty something bucks. And all that's gonna be is mm -hmm. basically this metal piece and this. You still gotta buy a helmet. And then you can, you know, but you can buy all this stuff off Amazon, these these clips, and then you know, just hook them into that if you wanted to. But you're still gonna need a helmet. Oh, I didn't I didn't know that they don't come with the clips either. That's no, crazy. yeah, the that. headset itself does not, it basically comes with these two ear cups and one cable that goes from one cable, you know, one headset cup to the other side and the microphone. That's it. Right. That's all that it comes with. And a charging right. cable. But you know, USB C. You're plugging in your strobe? Yes. All right. So he's we're plugging in our strobes, getting everything ready because tomorrow morning we're gonna try to go out and fly at zero dark thirty. It's uh You can't fly to... right now? What? Well, I'm on here with you guys. <laughs> We're already uh, past an hour. Time to go. <laughs> I, I know, right? <clears throat> I know. I'm oh, wait, we didn't spin the wheel of wheeling things. We need to spin the wheels. So, Will, go ahead and spin around in circles. The wheel yeah, of yeah. willy things? What the hell am I talking about? <laughs> what you talking about, man? Hey, let me let me say this. Um, we did, as a community, uh, we lost one uh, podcast show, whatever. Um, there's going to be a new podcast only. It's not going to be a live stream, uh, but uh, David Wolf is going to have a new podcast that comes out each Monday. Um, and so, it, like I said, it's not live, so you can watch it at any time. It's called Paramotor Life, and the first episode will start July 31st. So check it out. I'm actually yeah, looking 31st. forward to that, you know. Um, cool. He always did a really good show. You know, and now that he's going to come back on and uh, continue to do the podcast, I'm really happy that that David's doing that. He is, but again, it's not a live show like you know what we're doing right now. It's just just strictly a podcast. It, it'll be great. Oh. I mean, when I got into this sport. Actually, PPG Grandpa was first show that I watched, and it was a podcast. I didn't watch it live for a long time. <laughs> But I it seems to it. like a lot. It seems like a lot of people have listened to our audio. Our audio is doing really well. Our audio show. Uh, oh, good. Um, th these usually uh -huh. get a couple hundred, maybe three, two, three hundred views when we do these shows. But the audios, mm -hmm. man, it can be uh, three, four thousand um, li listens per week that uh, people cool. listen to. We went to okay. So yeah. sh shout out to what, what was his what was his name over at uh, Best Pro Shop. Uh, Matthew or Marshall. all right, Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. That's it, Marshall. Shout out to Marshall over at Bass Pro Shop. We went there. Yeah. Uh, we're getting our uh, generator for the uh, trailer, so we have um, air conditioning. And big uh, shout out to Marshall. Come join us, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> big big shout out. Uh, we went there and uh, we said that we were we're getting this uh, generator for. Um, for the run, run to the sky, it's about paramotors. He goes, oh, I know about paramotors. And I said, oh, you probably saw Tucker God. And he goes, who's Tucker God? And I said, did you know about uh, PPG Grandpa? Yeah, I know PPG Grandpa. I listen to him. I said, I'm PPG Grandpa. No way. <laughs> so I actually met somebody that knew me and not Tucker God. Go figure on that one. So we invited him over to uh, Paramotor Arkansas to uh, learn to fly. Cool. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Are you ready for the will? We're ready. Ready? We're ready for the wheel. And uh, Linda, we're ready for you to say hello to everybody. The spinning. Okay. Video. I'm unmuted. Hi, chatters. Welcome, welcome. So happy to have you here on Monday night. Just hanging with us. I learned all kinds of stuff tonight. So this is pretty cool. So good luck to everybody in the spinny, winny, winny wheel 
a Willy Winnie's things. <laughs> Say that fast three times. No, just kidding. Okay, uh, let's see. We got Bill H, Kramer, the other Nick, Angela Preslick, C.T. Fly, Tony Marzano, Gary Simons, Bonnie Franz, Matt Sloper, David Wolf, James C. Science, Dewey Milstead, Matt Sloper, John Wayne, Brian Franz, I Can Fly, PPG, Daniel Rausch, Kevin Houston, Flying Flamingo Jade, my lovely, and Kenneth Kidwell are all in the chat room tonight. Thank you all so much. I love you bunches. All right, we ready? Bunches and bunches. So tonight we are going to be spinning the spinny wheel of Winnie things, courtesy of Chris Carlos that had donated a couple things to run to the sky and said, please give these away on your show. So Chris, a big shout out to you, my friend. Thank you so much. And tonight we're yeah. spinning for the uh, magnet for your uh, throttle, a throttle magnet. It's like the hurricane wheel. <laughs> it does. <laughs> you ready? You ready to rock and roll. All right. Wait, did you put, I want to say oh, there, I said hi to John Wayne. Who's Hi, cowboy. Angela Presley. And the other as usual. <laughs> um, I'm thinking it might be Tony Marzano, Bill H., Danny Roosh, David Wolf, Gary Simons, I Can Fly, really? <laughs> Ken, uh, <laughs> Science, Fly from Mingo J., uh, Brian Franz, Kevin Houston, Dewey Milstead, Matt Sloper, Kramer, James, uh, C.T. Fly, Angela Presley, Bonnie Frant, the other Nick, and John Wayne. One of those. Hey! Woo. John Wayne. Woo. One of those. How hey, was the listening, Sean? What was that? <laughs> Come on. It's coming for Angela. It's coming. Oh, Brian Franz, he wins everything. Oh, no, no, might be James. He's going to win everything. Real. It's going to be James. Oh, Kramer. it's going to be James. Oh, oh it's going to be so oh, close. James. Oh, James is going to yeah, win. James is gonna <laughs> win. <laughs> Congratulations, James. James. That was too off. Boom. Chaka, loco, loco. That was close. So James, since you have won and we got this donation, what we need you to do is to get up with me. Just text me at 501-747-3558. Let me know that you won on the spinny wheel of Winnie Things. And uh, I just need your yeah. name, a address, mailing address, so we can send this out to you. Bada bing, bada boom. Congratulations, yes? Yes. Yep. I use my name, Sean's. <laughs> and so it's like the motivation, right? Dedication. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can put my name everywhere, right? Oh, let's, let's try Will. Congratu congratulate Will. No, that doesn't work. Congratulate Steve. Nope. Congratulate Linda. Nope, doesn't work. <laughs> nope, just Sean. Just Sean. All right, let's go even, ahead. Even the next flying is Moonshiners. Ah, Moonshiners. <laughs> <laughs> That is yeah. awesome. Hey, you want to be in here for the picture? We got to do a thumbnail. Watch uh -oh. Linda take off her glasses. Yep, uh -oh. Linda took off her glasses. Hey. Oh, my hair is my face. Oh. You it's have really, hair? You know, it's really, it's really hard to be me. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> Somebody's got to do One, it. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. There we go. Yay. Yay, no fancy wancy background tonight, chatters, because you know it's Sean, summertime. You're blurry. Monday night. What's so that? Sean yeah, is blurry. I didn't need all I'm that. I'm blurry. Yeah. Me to sorry to you. <laughs> you want to do it again? Sure. All right. Oh, are you really? You're doing yep. another one? One more time. One, two, three. <laughs> That's he was such, such a dork. Sean, such a dork. You old you grass of parsley dork. right there, man. Oh, yeah. The Northern Lights fly in's coming up the end of July. Well, just in a, this weekend. Yeah. That's exciting. 21st, it's... 22nd, 23rd of July. Wow. If you're in Wisconsin, better go. Northern Lights you, Repair Motors LLC. Woo! Woo! I like it. I like it. Well, Thank depending you, on and Eric, and I love you Steven, bunches. So much, 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 love, much love, much love. You want to take a trip all the way up there? To, yeah. yeah, 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 and bring the camper. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we might all right, go. go. 
We might, Thank we you, might chatters, go. for hanging with us tonight in the chat room. I guess shout out to my now, chatters. Mommy. We so 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 appreciate you every Monday night Absolutely. hanging with us. We really Absolutely. do. Absolutely, every Monday night. Much it's much crazy. Love. This is episode yes. one eighty. You know, four years, four seasons of d doing this podcast, and less than six months, we'll be in our fifth year. What? That's unbelievable. Yep. Isn't that crazy? Time flies. You guys, like a you guys like are a, family. Like you, guys, family. you guys are family to me, that's for sure. How you like the trike there, that. Butch? Oh, loving it. Loving <laughs> it. I saw you. You know what I did notice though? Do do you have the front wheel out too far? It looks like you're tiptoeing trying to put your a feet lot, on. A lot of people said that. It's because I'm short. <laughs> I've got it pulled in as far as it goes. He's <laughs> he's short. Go ahead and stand up. We'll show you the difference. So go ahead and stand up. Yeah, see how short he is? <laughs> he's standing on a stool. No, I'm not. <laughs> put some wooden yeah, blocks on the bottom of your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Welcome yeah, to our so, parent family, Butch. I just yeah. want to say thank, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Yes. Yes. Butch Fly from Fly Butch Fly. Yeah. You can, you can find you what on PPG, PPGbutch.com? Ppg .com. All right. And then find you on. Find me on Instagram, Fly Butch Fly. You can find me on YouTube, Butch Fly. And PPGbutch.com takes you to YouTube also. Excellent. Oh, yeah. So, and you can find me at ppggrandpa.com or paramountarkansas.com or run into the sky dot org or dot org dot org because we, because this is, this is uh, our, our audio show goes to paratalk.org. Okay. So, okay. if you want to listen to our show, if you go to paratalk.org, you'll listen, you'll be able to see all, see, you'll be able to listen to all of our shows for the last four years wow. amazing is there going to be a link on uh, uh run into the sky uh, there is a link down below and you can go to run into the sky.org and uh, we're working on it still obviously it's a work in progress uh, if you would like to help us help us out with you know with my um hiccups no not without hiccup. if you'd like to help us out by going to run into sky.org <laughs> my, my, oh, oh, my damn hiccups he's had them all day three three days i'm tired of these damn things um you can help us out by going to the donation page if you have somebody that you would like uh to nominate you can nominate someone or you can nominate yourself um the nomination page is up and running so if you are oh. disabled yet and you want to fly check us out i love the home page Oh yeah, yeah. The homepage. If if on a on a computer, go to runintothesky.org, and the first thing you see is Butch running into the sky. Yeah, our our first candidate. My first flight. Yeah, the one that he goes. I'm flying like, like a, a bird. bird. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear him. He, we can hear him from a thousand feet up there. I'm flying, ah. Sean. I'm flying. Yeah, it was it's, a dream come true. Yeah, it's I've been amazing. Waiting on it, waiting on it, dreaming that's about cool. it. How many? How many flights you got now? Uh, 20, 21? Right 20. 20? Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, went up a thousand feet yesterday for an hour and a half. Yeah. Broke a couple personal records, and now I'm gonna try to break them a little more. Oh nice. yeah, that reminds me. How many question. people? Oh, did y'all see yeah. the gaggle added? Now that you you can um, chat other people and stuff on Gaggle now, no, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. they added a bunch of new stuff. Um, I, I forgot what, what all it was, but I had to add in all my information what? again yesterday. You can yesterday. follow people on Gaggle, so like if you wanted to follow Sean and see when he flies, if he allows it, because you can turn privacy mode on. But if you leave that off, then you can see everybody's flight that you know. You just got to look them up. Cool. Yeah. And also, too, we got a uh, group, uh, uh, Run to the Sky group. You're more than welcome to join us on Gaggle and Paramotor Arkansas uh, group. You're more than welcome to join us. That way you can uh, oh, cool. Them. Okay. But what is, yes. if you had to pick one word, what would the one word be to describe your first flight? Life changing. 
I knew he was going to say that. And I was like, that's more than one word. That's that's two words. Uh, Well, maybe he can hyphenate the life. Yeah, I guess you could hyphenate it. Yeah, he hyphenated it. But it is. It's life changing. I mean, for everybody out there that flies, tell me it's not life changing. It 100% is is life changing. Everything. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. My woman says, couldn't you find a safer hobby? What is a safer <laughs> hobby? Fishing? That, you can get like, you know. That little uh, skid that you finger. made, Will, with the paramotors? Paramotors, paramotors, paramotors. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> skill, uh, summed it up, pretty much sums it up. That's yeah, pretty much all me and Sean talk about. From the time <laughs> we wake up to the time we go to sleep. Right. We didn't talk paramotors. When we, when we when, when we drive oh. and we go like across town or across the state or down to Texas across or, a couple of states, we 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 don't turn the radio on. We've never turned the radio on. We're just this nonstop paramotor, 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 paramotor. It's yeah. bad. No matter where you go, you be like, man, I wonder what it'd be like to fly right here. <laughs> it's yep. just, everywhere, it's just everywhere, everything you do is exactly. paramotor, paramotor, paramotor. Yeah, paramotor, paramotor, paramotor. Yeah. Paramotor. Yep. Yeah, that's I love interesting. It. Robert, <laughs> I love when Robert it. came to visit and seeing, you know, where Ryan lives and all this acreage he has and everything. And he's looking at all the trees and, you know, it's so beautiful up here. And the first thing, you know, you think I can fly here? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yep. 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 We are blessed right here. We are blessed. Chris has helped us out so much. Man. Yeah. This is such a blessing. So, yeah, so Butch, watch. when you when you went on your first flying thing, when you first went up in the air, was your heart like mm-hmm. racing? You're like, oh. And then when you when you yes. when you landed, you're just like, were you still? I I would I didn't even. I was I shaking twelve hours right, after I, I landed. Flying, flying like you, so I can't imagine the emotions that were going on. When oh you yeah. Landed. They I, all came at one time when I landed. All the emotions come up from the time I was a kid jumping off my mom's couch, you know, with a <laughs> towel wrapped around my neck thinking I was Superman to actually, oh, yeah. being, you know, because I, oh. three years, I dreamed about it, watching it on YouTube. And I, I, so oh, yeah. I, I know I what tried it was. It off, jumped yeah. off roofs with umbrellas. This yeah. umbrella can make yeah. me come down slower. Those kids <laughs> did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I broke a pinky doing that. You know, <laughs> I had a sheet jumping off the roof with a sheet. Oh, this would be good enough for a canopy. Woohoo. You know, <laughs> we were just, hey, we were just training early. That's all. Yeah, so, that's all it was. <laughs> You're probably yeah. like, dang, man, I wonder what it would have been like if I didn't have that sheet over my head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. I could have died. Go. So then when, you, then when you landed and the, everything, then you went and you grabbed your Superman cape, didn't you? And you yep. ran around the field like a crazy guy, like you were super, <laughs> right? Because yep. it. it was amazing. No, it as soon as you amazing. land, you're like, when can I go back up? Because I want to go back up. Right. Uh, yeah, that's, yep. that's the way that yep. goes. I'm still waiting We've been, trying, we've been trying to get him to stay up more than, you know, 10 minutes at a time. <laughs> Don't know why he keeps on, you know, getting up there and then coming down after 10 minutes. Like, dude, well, stay up there, you know? He is practicing his landings. I mean, I got. Yeah, I, that's I, what I, I was doing. Yeah, I was that, trying to get problem with that. on the landings. Yeah. That's and a good idea. That's why I like the trike. You know, it makes a lot of landings a lot easier. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, how, and you know, and you love flying and everything because when you drive past the airport, you know, you get all all excited. It's like when I, whenever we drive <laughs> past Torch now, I'm just like, oh my God, it was fun. And then I was in Howell, Michigan for like four days and we drove by the airport and uh, I was just like, oh my God, there it is. There's there, you know. There's the flats where the flying was at. I've been there before, and this and that. So it's exciting. It's, it is. it's cool. Yeah. Hey, Steve, uh, what 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 flight are you what flight are you on now? Um, eight or nine. I got it. I logged them all, so I don't know. I think it's yeah. eight or nine. But yeah, Butch is way ahead of me. If I had a place where I could just go out the back door and fly, then yeah, yeah freaking be That's doing it all the time. Saying. <laughs> I'd be blessed. at 50 or 100 by now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for the weather. I'd say, hey, Sean, yeah. what's it like today? Can we go? I Can we go? Can we go? <laughs> I'm up at 430 every morning now. <laughs> yeah, and this morning we got at 430 and it was foggy. I'm like, I'm going back to sleep. 
and uh, I went back to sleep. I think I told, I think what a total of ten hours I slept last yeah. night, plus going back to sleep. I was exhausted. I'm like, I'm just tired. Wow. I came in here, went over my trike, wiped it down, <laughs> did a post flight, pre flight, then ready to go. You know, I even put some cushion under the seat, <laughs> put a mirror on go. the front. Oh yeah, that's right. The mirror you put on today. That was pretty yep. cool. Got it all decked out. Yeah. This was fun, Temple guys. Was right. I really enjoyed this tonight. I really too. enjoyed yeah, this. Too. Always, always right. enjoy. It. And like I said, guys, if you're on Gaggle and uh, you can find Run It Run Into the Sky group. Um, or Paramotor Arkansas group, you're more than welcome to join either one and uh, watch me fly, Butch fly, and all the other people that have joined up on uh, those particular groups. And if you have groups on Gaggle, post them in the Super Chat. I would love to join, I mean, uh, public yeah. uh, gr groups, post them in the Super Chat, uh, and I uh, would love to join yours too. I seen somebody asking the other day on Facebook, I think mm -hmm. it was, that if somebody had started one in the Southeast yet. Has oh. anybody started a, a group in the Southeast? Oh, thanks for reminding me. Yeah, that, that happened to be on Southeast Paramotor Group. If you're on, yeah. Facebook, if you live in the Southeast, check out Southeast Paramotor Group. It uh, just be perfect for you. Yeah. So when it comes to groups, I can only find the ones that I created i can't find groups that are out there and i'm looking at it right now on my phone and i cannot see how to chat with other people or find other people or anything like that is there something that i'm missing i mean uh, there's there's your flights there's oh as far as adding groups and stuff yeah i yeah. think the group thing you have to be invited to them right i think I that's how to add is. them but you if you see different people you can like if you see a person's name you can hit message see that i could send them a message right. but you know to add groups i don't know I, maybe they're going to keep adding stuff on but they did add a bunch of stuff and i, I gotta go look what they changed but there's a lot when did they update was it just recently? Um, it was uh, yesterday, yesterday or the day before. Yesterday morning when I, I tried to log in to, you know, I hit record and it made me, you know, do all my information again. Yeah, it changed everything because it says I have zero flights. What? Yes. That's, That's yeah. Right. Because that means your data has just been wiped out, right? If you That's what it looks like. But yet it'll show your last flight and it don't make any sense that it's showing that, but I got lifetime flight zero. Flights this year zero. Flights this month I got zero. A bunch of oh, yeah, I just hit update. It wasn't updated. I mean, oh, it, okay. So go uh, go to your uh, go to update and let's oh, see. I, mine updated yesterday. All right, mine didn't update. Yeah. So yeah, maybe you can it. figure out. It'll show you what's in that update if you look at it before you no. download it. It shows everything they changed. It's a lot. Oh, it, it is. Okay. Yeah, it is changed. All right. It says no flying sites found. That's weird. Um, explore. Oh, that's cool. There yeah, we go. All yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. It shows, it shows flying sites all this? around the country that you can go fly at, yeah. which is pretty cool. Yeah, this oh, sure. Where'd oh, you get sure. the update, Sean? Oh, no, you got to go update. So you got, so if you're on an iPhone, you got to go to your app store. Once oh, you go okay. to your app store, you got to find, you know, search for gaggle. And once you search for gaggle, it will says update. Now I just updated. Now I open it. Now it's a totally, uh, totally different. Yeah. It, look, look at that. All sorts of different stuff now. I, okay. So, so does it show your, because uh, I don't want to lose my data. So did it? That's what I'm trying to find. My groups. There's my groups. Okay. Um, my friends and followers. Oh my gosh. I got friends. And it followers? Yeah, followers, yeah. Holy, holy smokes. And then this, if you hit explore, it shows, well, this is not going to show up good. It shows flying sites near oh, you. Yeah. Those nice. places you can go fly. Yeah, but look, map. you have zero followers, zero yeah, whatever. Yeah, I know. Where's it. your flights? So there, okay, know. your flights are there. I see it. Let me see if I can find my flights. See, I got seven flights. Uh, what? Max out, 80, to what? Right. Zero hours. Let me see what if I can heck? find... Yeah, it's it screwed mine too. So I mean, but now it'll be right, hopefully. <laughs> oh well, yeah, I'm seeing a lot more people. I wasn't able to see a lot more people last time. Uh your last flight. Oh, there's my last flight that I recorded. 
yeah, it's there's my last flight. Um, all right. It has achievements now too. I don't know. People are going to be trying to break. I'm going to break the record. Well, <laughs> oh, I it, anyway. it keeps it. Yeah, it saved the flights. Yeah. Well, why it. didn't it save mine? Oh, God, that's weird. It saved the flights. You might. You, flight might you might. You might need to restart your restart your phone. But uh, it did. It did zero out lifetime flights and uh, total. Daggle. Flights. See, mine's got open. Hmm. Mine has open. I went to the okay, app store. Go ahead and Daggle, open. open. Following yeah. followers. I'll go to Google. Yeah, I just started going trying to find people I know and hit follow. So, you know, um, <laughs> go to Google. Go to Google. Go to Google. Go. Uh, site. Oh, this is really neat. Okay. See? Yeah, they did a really. Yeah, go to Google. Update. Update. There it is. Yeah, I told you. There you go. Uh, so, it still so, wasn't there just a second. I know. So if you go there and it says open, just close out your gaggle. And then go to your um, app, store. app store, and then it'll, so update. Click the update, and I'll open it. See, look at that. All right, oh, now there yeah. we go. And, <laughs> and, before before you, you do that, that though, yeah. but before looking, you do that, yeah, um, you can uh, export your data first, just in case it's important to you. It's yeah, maybe I should have did that first. So, <laughs> uh, now this one's different. Oh, that's where it is. It's under the, the gear icon at the top right from the home of the first page. And somewhere in there, I think it is. Subs, accounts. Yeah, I don't know. It moved. That's Recovery it driver mode. What is that? Are you <laughs> kidding me? What? Yeah, if you go like just on the main screen before you ever hit record, wait, what did I click on? If you land and you got Google open and you land out at a place other than uh, where you started from, it will automatically email the contact that you've set up. See right here, if you hit record and you look in the top right, you see that little car? Yeah. Like, if you hit record like you're gonna fly and you click on that car, it goes to recovery driver mode and it shows a picture of a car. I guess that's so if you land out somewhere, you can do that and people can come find you. Oh, so yeah. they, they, well, I, so I, I, signed the email, though. I, I signed up. So most people probably have the wingman, which is free. Um, I did the, um, the frequent flyer and, yeah. uh, and then I just, did the adventurer for seventy dollars for six for twelve months? So I'm curious to see what that does as far as all the cool things that I can do on this. I, I love supporting. Know. I love. Supporting. I'm under a frequent flyer, whatever that one is. Yeah, I just did the adventure. Now I can see all flights. Oh, cool! There's all my flights achievements. Oh, cool! Look at that, Nino. You know, all right, so I don't always log my flights, but now with this new. Um, now with this new update, I might just have to do more flights and see what my achievements are. What are the achievements that you can do? Oh, it's your own personal achievements. Flight time, total distance, speed, climb rate, altitude, yeah. height, AGL, G-force, and open distance. Okay, so, the, so it's, it's achievements for your own self. It's your own personal achievement. Yep. Yep. Neato. All right. I'm going to have to start flying more with this thing on. <laughs> you know, because a lot of times I just want to go up and fly, you know, and just enjoy, you know, it's like a beautiful sunrise or a sunset I want to see. Or I just want to go fly and not have comms on and just be free, you know, and I just, I don't always turn on a, a recording app. But yes. Okay. CT Fly, I don't even know how to upgrade my subscription. I'm on Frequent Flyer. I paid for whatever it was so I could get account, a subscription. There we go. Frequent Flyer. Manage subscription. Okay. But see, I was on, I'm on annual already. 
for frequent fire yeah oh i see adventurer oh yeah. so there's one above what i had that's what i just joined that, that they just had it apparent apparently because i i love to support these guys these guys are great detailed so, weather forecast that's I, good i saw that so i can't wait to try that one out and figure out your your forecast uh, your upcoming area. flyable days for favorite sites i like that man that yeah. man, i have to upgrade my thing dadgummit <laughs> Oh, he's got to upgrade your thing. A potty mouth. <laughs> what? Three flights in the last twelve months. Look at that. That's crazy. Hey, damn it. Okay, so you can put your LZs on here. So I'm going to put our our run into the sky LZ. Run into the sky LZ. Add site. Cool. All right. So what happens now when I? do this um does this give it the new um i guess it does so i'm just adding the our lz over here i'm curious to see if they give me uh weather for oh, okay uh, so okay that's cool so you can put a picture of your uh, lz you can tag your lz you can do a site guide wind guide takeoff area landing areas Man, this is really cool. Wow. Like this for your region. <laughs> yeah. Our that, that's what I've done already. Yeah. Right. So I, yeah, this is so cool. So tags. Okay. So paramotor. Okay. So you can put tags on it. A hang glider, paraglider, paramotor, soar, thermals, winch, XC, flatland. So you can tag it, whatever you want to. Site guide. Oh, so you can actually put a guide on there. The site mm -hmm. guide has a site description, getting there weather notes rules and comments oh, that's neat wind guide ah good so you can oh. put rules for specific yeah lz's that's nice so your wind guide also is it it says that you can avoid different um directions of wind like if we have a, a south wind we want it, you can actually hit avoid if you uh, want to so people know to to not go there on certain wind that's pretty neat wow the man. best wind, the max wind the direction wow they've really put a lot of time into yeah this. they just took out all of my stuff <laughs> With, yeah what all your stuff everything that i had in there about my wing and paramotor, we'll just said to stuff. back up everything oh, good well <laughs> that was too so late. back up everything before you hit update yeah take off areas oh this is really cool i'm, I'm really gonna dig this it just wiped out all my flights Man. oh well that's right you'll get more flights yeah it's not like i won't make more you gotta start all over but oh well oh well darn you're oh to, darn. darn you're gonna have to fly some man more. gonna have to fly <laughs> some more get better for oh well i'll i'll just have to do that hey can i join your group oh cool so <laughs> so i put so i put the run to the sky and it shows right here uh upcoming flyable days weather forecast let me tap that and see what happens. what wow look <laughs> there that's that's a windy hey, on hey. stair that's a windy on steroids wow does it show just ground or does it show like it's showing clouds water, precipitation gust speed wind speed direction height in agl height oh yeah height and agl uh the the days the time look at all that nice and it's showing you oh this is so cool hey i got bill look i'm like we don't need no trainer we got gaggle <laughs> <laughs> this is so cool <laughs> dustin judd joshua marsh darren Barry. i did uh, click on my username and it yeah. still shows i got nine flights I mean, it may not show my data and everything, but if I go just to that, it shows my max altitude and that I have had nine flights. That's there we go. Max height was 1,388 feet, three hours, 50 minutes flight time, which is wrong, but. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Cool. It actually shows our locations on here. Oh, this is so neat. So let me go ahead and turn this around so you guys can see. So this is our LZ. And it actually shows on our LZ. 
Oh, wow. Look at that. New look right sky. into the sky. <laughs> yep. And um, I just put it, I just type, put in new location um, to add it a different location as far as like, um, this is so cool. All right. So neat. Oh, it has a site chat. Oh, my gosh. It has a run into the sky chat. <laughs> yeah, that is that is cool. All right. Sean is um, making me want to get the adventurer subscription. I know, right, CD CD Fly? I'm considering it. I, I I'm gonna wait. I think I just got it. <laughs> you it? just got it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right. <laughs> so you just I paid just you just paid seventy dollars for that? I guess I did. I got did. You see his face? He's like, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Or he could have did um, monthly, which is like seven bucks. But yeah, I got. I did the yearly to get two months free. Yeah, I'm all about getting the, the, the new month. You know, a couple months free. Support I mean, it's a good is. app. I don't mind supporting that thing. It, they they work hard at making that. Once they added other aircraft in the area, that one was a, a big thing. And now that they're adding all this too, it's even better. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Guys, I've got to run. Yeah, me too. Uh, Sean's gonna play with that for yeah. three hours. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we got to run. Time to go to bed, so I can We got to run. Time. We got to run into the sky. That's it. There you so, go. Y'all have a great evening, uh, everyone. Thank you so so much. Um, uh, Chris Carlos already sent out uh, your stuff, James. So congratulations on the win so real quick will fly needs to run so will fly tell us a little bit about yourself your just the tip and how to get to it yeah man uh just the tip is the series you can uh go to youtube look for will fly or online at willflyppg.com all my videos are right there enjoy excellent eh? so. and uh scuba steve Yo, just go to paramotordude.com. I do a show Friday, 8 to 10 Eastern Standard Time. Come on out there and on my YouTube channel. That, that link will take you to my YouTube channel and watch the show. We talk about something. It may be paramotor related, probably. More probably. Probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. And I try not to, but it happens a lot. <laughs> absolutely. We always got to talk about paramotors, right? Yeah, paramotor, paramotor, paramotor. Paramotor, paramotor, paramotor. <laughs> Linda <laughs> Anderson. <laughs> Paramom in the house. Now, this Paramom. is fun tonight. Thank you so much. My team, my chatters, my para chatters, and everything that joined us on Monday nights. We love you bunches. And we so, so appreciate our listeners too. And uh, yeah, if you miss the show tonight, you can watch it later, watch tomorrow or whenever you want. So uh, if you want to be a guest on my on my show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you want to be a guest on the show, uh, just get up with ParamomUSA.com and it'll take you right to my Facebook page and just uh, DM me and say, hey, I want to be a guest on your show and I'll get you all set up. And you, as you can see, we have a really good time on Monday night. So don't be shy. And uh, don't forget Wednesday night, just want to fly. And uh, you can hang out with Jade Lear and Deweese and all that good stuff. And we have a good time. And then on Thursday night, we have paraglidingtalk.com with your host, Robert Michaels. And you never know what he's got up his sleeve every Thursday. So y'all got to, yeah, stop on by Thursday nights. That's the place to be. That's it. Excellent. Excellent. It's always good to be on your show, Linda. And uh, thank you so much. We <laughs> definitely appreciate you. Don't forget also run over to runintothesky.org. Um, if you can help us out with a, a buck or two, that definitely helps. We got the PayPal, we got Cash App, and if you want to, you can just go over here and donate anything you want to online. And of course, you can give uh, stocks, uh, corporate match, legacy giving, and you can even give by check. So thank you so much, everybody. Definitely appreciate you guys. Um, and we'll see you next week here on ClearProp TV. Run to the Sky Paramotor Podcast. Be there or be square. And y'all fly safe. Fly safe. safe. Always. Peace out. Okay. Woo. Running into the sky. I love to run into the sky. Night, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>